This is a headgum podcast. Can we so see Jake, it? Yeah, yeah, hold on. Jake, hold you're on. the weirdo. I'm the, I'm the weirdo. You're the hold weirdo. On. Let's see hold Josh's. On. Hold on. I gotta By the way, well, now anything, this is the fit check you anything, wanted here. Anything, Kayla grabbed her phone. Anything to see. Ah, our show here, just I'll, changed. And back we are, Jake. You know wow. what, I ju- what I just got, Garf? Huh? A response from the uh, Reiki person. Oh, wow. This is an update. What do Wait, you got? Is there, so, was there smoke in your room or is that a, did you see that, Kevin, in his thing? Or I think you I just lit a, a There's a small fire. That's yeah. fine, though. Uh, I, I don't want anything to get in the way of the intro. So tell me about this Reiki thing. I'll die in a know. house fire. Oh, you don't know. I don't know. What just, was the first email you wrote? You come highly recommended. What's Reiki? <laughs> What's Reiki? <laughs> uh, is this real? Can we call Explain you Jakey Reiki? Works. I love it. Yeah. Well, if I do it, Reiki Jakey. Yeah. There's a real chance it's going to be Mo on that table, and they're going to go like, we are now releasing from your knee, and I'm going to go, you haven't released nothing. $75. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to give you that $75 and two pokes in the eye. Well, you released nothing. Hey, let me I, see the energy. If you released a we, bunch of energy for me, let me see the trauma. We yeah, put really, it in a fucking jar. I'm going to take it with me. We really, by the way, I love how Mo's turning into Joe Pesci. He's become a- By the way, who do you think inspired Joe Pesci? Joe Pesci used to have a two-person singing act. What? Joe Pesci is like a song and dance man. That's amazing. When he started, you know how we all started with our like you and Evan, you know, our little two man sketch groups and comedy groups. That's what Joe Pesci was doing. Wow. He had like, he did like big sketches and songs. Then he watched Three Stooges. This is a makeup. He watched Mo and he goes like this. I think I could do that. And I'm only five, (laughs) two. He's like, he live. And you probably Googled if Mo in real life, if we Googled him, I bet he's a little guy, probably five, one. He probably was. And I bet he was a nice guy. Whenever you yeah, see those funny. things, you're always like, like, that's what they say, like Harpo and the Marx Brothers. He was like, he was the funniest guy, but he never spoke. <laughs> Mo was probably just like a real sweetheart. He's like, yeah, I'm yeah. sorry about the eyeballs. We have a great guest on the show today, which I'm really excited about from Mythical Kitchen, Josh Shear, a.k.a. the Mythical Chef Josh. He has a show on YouTube called Last Meals, which I was on. You can check it out. It's a great show. He cooks all your last meals and then asks you questions. And we actually had a really good chat. He did a, on his show, they produced the hell out of it, where they brought, Kevin, who was the guy he brought on again? The guy from the ostrich farm. Yeah, the caller from the ostrich farm. (laughs) Right. He came onto the show, which was a lot of fun. Uh, He's got a book right now called Mythical Cookbook. And... He's just a great guest. He comes on, he crushes it. He's a lot of fun. We appreciate him coming on the show. So if you're a fan of Josh, you're going to enjoy it. And if you're not, I think you're going to become a fan. And so, Kevin, how do we get out of here? Without further ado. Okay. And now the show's beginning. Welcome to We're Here to Help Caller. Can we uh, get your name, where you're calling from, and your age, please? Yeah, I'm Garrett calling from Indianapolis, and I'm 29. Whoa, Garrett. Okay. Well, Garrett, listen, I'm not going to lie. You've got a a pretty special one here. Uh, You got Jake Johnson always here. You got me, Gareth. But you also have the host and author, but the host of the wildly successful and popular Mythical Kitchen. Josh Shearer is here. Give it up. Hello. Crazy no successful way. that show. Crazy. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. It is very, intro. It's, it's a great, it, I mean, we'll talk about it more, but it really is. We're going to save that for the- it's So a, engaging. It's, it's such a great way to mix food and interviewing. It is no as, wonder. As fun of a show to be a guest on. Oh, I love it. As that. there is. Uh, thank you. One, thank you. Uh, you were an incredible guest. Everybody loved that episode. Two, uh, we figured if Hot Ones is asking people to like burn their buttholes off, yeah, we would do the exact opposite. We're like, yeah. come eat yes, your favorite agreed. foods. All you got to do is talk about dying. <laughs> all right, Garrett. Uh, we're all missing the H on your name. Um, why don't you let us solve your problem? What's going on? Yeah. So just a little bit of backstory. I've been dating my girlfriend for about ten months. Okay. You know things are great. Great. When we first started dating, we were watching Guardians of the Galaxy. I just passively mentioned, or like mentioned that I liked the character Rocket, and that I had a few like stories about raccoons that used to live in my backyard. This is an and interesting. So I, story. I didn't intend for this to be talking about a deep interest of mine, mm-hmm. but she's sort of like taken it and ran. So it started off like she got me like a little raccoon finger puppet. Oh, I see. Um, as a housewarming mm-hmm. gift when I got into a new apartment, and then it moved to like stickers and Christmas ornament. Yeah. Now I have like wall art and posters <laughs> and raccoons That's in my great. living room. I get this. 
You got like a raccoon like fat head on the wall. No, I get this. This, <laughs> this happened with my mom. My mom mentioned once she liked frogs. Yeah. So every every holiday, I just got her frogs, and finally she's like, "I like them fine. <laughs> They're not. I'm not identifying with them." But you're like, once you have a an in, if you yeah. don't know, she she just you know, knows he likes raccoons. It's it's raccoons. what I go through with the Packers, yeah. and I'm not even yes, doing a bit. It's I think like, this is right. I've identified myself as a huge Packer fan, and every, it, I am now in my 40s, going like, "It's I can't wear the cheese head anymore. It's sad." And people <laughs> are like, "Here you go, more che- fake cheese." Yeah. <laughs> All I hear is people complaining about others giving them gifts. Yeah. Yeah, just accept it. You just accept it. Yeah, uh, but you know, I had this guy give point. me a book once. That was just <laughs> I had a guy give me the mythical cookbook, which was very successful. What book did you get? Uh, I got Master and Margarita. It's about uh, Russia. It's not just about Russia. I mean, the Bolshevik it's, Revolution. It's, it's about the Bolshevik Revolution. It's a good book. Yeah. All right, so Garrett, <laughs> you become a guy who receives nothing but raccoon gifts. The yep. floor is yours. Yeah, and so I'm like. Even just last weekend, I was looking to get a tattoo, and she influenced me to get. So now I have a raccoon tattoo. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa, 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 whoa. Don't big buddy. escalation. Big she escalation. She just went from the driver's seat to you're in the driver's ed car, and you're the teacher. <laughs> yeah, hold on. That's a wild. Also, twist. I don't buy that she bullied you into getting. No, a raccoon that's what I mean. Tattoo. It's like, no, you no, she didn't bully me, Garrett. Yeah. You got a raccoon. <laughs> so what's the okay? Please. So, well, I, I don't want to start jumping in. I want more setup. So you just got a raccoon tattoo. The floor is still yours. Oh. Garrett, Garrett, we yeah. have to. I, but I, okay. <laughs> Go ahead. So I saw it, you know, sort of as, as a joke. And I just, just, you know, kept going with it over these past 10 months. But she is, she's genuine in thinking that I have like this obsession with raccoons. Like anytime she sees anything, she's like, oh, either I got this for you or I was, which I, I think it's sweet, you know? Sure. That's why you're but calling. I just need to know. Yeah. I just need to know, like, how do I tell her that I'm not actually, like, obsessed with Well, raccoons? first of all, you buddy, get rid of your raccoon buddy, tattoo. Buddy, you got a <laughs> raccoon tattoo last week, and now you can't put the raccoon <laughs> so genie you, back in the bottle. You know what certain women say? <laughs> the whole, this whole world of, like, boys are simple and girls are complicated. If I were her, I have no idea what message you're sending, Garrett. Yeah, uh, dude. How do I tell her I don't like raccoons after I told her I like raccoons and I got a raccoon after tattoo? After I got a raccoon on my belly. <laughs> <laughs> There's what? a very simple answer here. Uh, Please. You're a raccoon guy now for life. Uh, you lean in. You have to lean in. A tattoo. I want to know what the bridges were from finger puppet to tattoo. Same. Those are, there have to be bridges, right? The, yeah. It, Garrett, why did you get a raccoon tattoo if you're not that interested in raccoons? On top of that question, please tell us where dimensions and specificity of what Fair. this is. And can you send okay. us a photo so, of it that yes. we can post? Are you comfortable with that? Or is there any way for you to send it during this? I have one. Oh, you do have one? Yeah. I'll, I'll put it up. Keep uh, it yeah, so, Garrett, one. keep talking. We're going to see it as you're going, but can you Can't describe wait. the tattoo? Yeah, so it's a raccoon that's sort of like cosplaying as Ash Ketchum from Pokemon. Holy fuck. Garrett, <laughs> come on. It. 10 months and you're getting this? <laughs> this is, I mean, and you might as well ask her to marry you. Was this your idea or her idea? So sort of both. I had wanted something sort of similar to this. And well, then- What is similar to yeah. that? <laughs> well, like I wanted something sort of Pokemon themed. Okay, so you like Pokemon a lot. But uh, now let me ask you yeah. a real question. What is your, so- you do like raccoons or you just kind of said it? I mean, I I like, I don't dislike raccoons. This is wild. See, if Garrett, this is real life, you're a wild see, guy. See, Garrett, head. I think we all were like <laughs> identifying the problem until oh the fucking God. enormous <laughs> raccoon tattoo yes! you got on your bicep <laughs> that is visible in a t-shirt. Wait, Gareth, can we see yours? It, I can we, <laughs> this is this is, a, this is a Gareth Garrett moment. This is this is where the H comes in. This is where the H comes in. Well, that's Packers. Oh no, that's it. Oh yeah, this is Incredible. my cat. Incredible. Yeah. So in the and, flesh. I, and, I, and I and I recognize Kevin, you're directly in front of the mic. Yeah. Go the other way. I recognize Produce the moment. There you uh, go. I recognize that they're. That's the same tattoo. I recognize it seems like I'm in a glass house with a handful of stones. Uh, <laughs> I, I would like to disclose something. I have a tattoo of a goat on my lower back. Can we so see Jake, it? Yeah, yeah, hold on. Jake, hold you're on. the weirdo. I'm the, I'm the weirdo. You're the hold weirdo. On. Let's see yeah, Josh's. Hold on. I gotta By the way, well, now anything, this is the fit check you want here. Anything, they like anything, grabbed her phone. Oh, okay. Anything to see. Oh, our show Wait, just I'll, changed. I'll it to Gareth first. So there's... Jesus, Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Josh, it's great. Yeah, thank you. 
Wait, we lift it up. Oh my god! It, it rides a lot lower near the butt crack. Than Incredible. I mean, you have a yeah. goat stamp. I sure. I honestly just felt like I was at a strip club Is it? <laughs> when yeah. you stood up with your body taking those pants off. You didn't I, feel that when I lifted my my t-shirt a little bit? No, I felt like I was at like an AA meeting. <laughs> <laughs> felt like you were, I was, he's like, well, at that point I lost my you family. You Chili's and the <laughs> yeah. waiter needs an extra dollar on the tip. Exactly. Hey, let me show you my arm. I went from the back room of Chili's to like the champagne room. Wiggly Snakes. <laughs> Anyway, and I liked Wiggly Snakes you a lot You tip 200 more. in the champagne room. Hell Anything yes. can happen. Anything well, can happen. We were That's talking before. You are nicely ripped up, Josh. So I before we get that. to this raccoon for a second, because there's just a lot that's happened in the last three minutes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Can you describe that tattoo and what that means to you? Yes. Yeah, so this tattoo is actually for charity, a uh, charity called No Kid Hungry. A, a baby goat is called a kid. Yeah. No, I know. Kid Hungry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They do great work. Uh, ending childhood food insecurity yes. is a big, uh, important cause to me. I had a terrible mustache at some point and uh, the fans raised $5,000 to me to shave it. But we had a whole two week campaign going and that. That goal was out in five minutes. So I said 30 grand and I'll get a lower back tattoo. No. And way. so mine was, you know, 300,000 meals for underserved kids. Gareth, what's your story? <laughs> so mine is actually very simple. It's called uh, Cats for Hats. And uh, <laughs> there's a lot of kids out there who don't have, a- and I know we're laughing, but there's a lot of kids in some countries that don't have access to clean hats. And um, and you're through, a, please stop, idiot. please stop. <laughs> through this campaign, and I'm going to talk into this camera, through this campaign, um, I got a tattoo and I was able to give 400 children uh, hats, brimmed hats, <laughs> Uh, meshed hats. You are and the stupidest we're both, person. We're both. We're both. We're both, <laughs> we're both, we're both philanthropists. Feeding hungry kids. You're talking about putting. Jake, here's what's so here's what's so western well, about mesh hats. Mesh mesh hats, hats. Said, yes. Here's what's so western about your take, okay? <laughs> okay? Because you're just so used to being able to block the sun out. A lot of these kids cannot do <laughs> How that. About the back of their necks, they could turn it around like uh, you know Ashton Kutcher style. So yeah. Garrett, we found out why Josh and Gareth got their tats. Your raccoon, which is massive, massive. Man. Mm-hmm. Uh, you like Pokemon, but you're not. A, you're telling me that's on your left arm. And you don't identify as a big raccoon guy? Because not really. Like, I don't dislike raccoons, like I said. No, like, I, I but we're not, like you didn't them, get an alligator. You got Josh, a raccoon. You're the mm-hmm. raccoon guy for life, man. Josh, Josh and I ha- at least ha- and a story. Lo- that we have a story. There's a rationale that you don't, the idea of you getting this ink is wild. It, it, you understand. I'm not even, we're not even trying to be. Like, this is just a crazy leap yes. as far as, like, now you want to tell her you're not into raccoons. I mean, I would worry that she would be like, are you okay? She will. Yeah. So, Garrett, as your friend, which is what we are, I- I'm already going, you, Josh said it earlier, you're a raccoon guy forever. Well, we should, we should, I, I could pitch in the direction of trying to solve this, but I do agree, you have branded, <laughs> yeah. physically branded yourself now. Yeah, and also, Garrett, when you look at like when you get a big tattoo like that, right? So raccoons, for at least what I know about them, they live in the cities. Trash they, pandas. They're mm. trash pandas. Yeah. <laughs> they, they go around. They eat people's trash. They're like little bears. They're very smart. They're feisty. Ad- adorable at adorable. times too. And in certain suburban areas, they get fat. They're little Rabbit. fat garbage people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what you're mm. kind of saying is your thing. It's like getting a tattoo of a big rat. And then it's not bad, but people are going to inherently go like, oh, you love, you're a raccoon guy, which says something about your personality. For example, there's a, a, a what looks like a spork. Mm, correct. So I'm going to assume you really care a lot about food and or eating. Correct. If I see a fucking huge raccoon, <sighs> Gareth, it, the joke is that, but the reality is that's your cat. Yeah. And your cat's your family, and you love Jose. Thank you. The other one is a logo of a team that you care about. Keep going. Agreed. Just keep We're moving, because you're doing it in a great I way. I, that you're, I for got you, nasty for no reason. For you, no, you haven't yet, which is shocking. Thank you. But you, Garrett, I, I don't see this as any other path, but you're a goddamn raccoon guy. Well, well can I say, Josh, please. please, some stories start at the beginning, right? I wanted to raise money for charity. Mm-hmm. Ergo, I got a tattoo. 
I think you can write some stories starting at the end. Let's take this tattoo. Yes, I love this. Now you retrofit a charitable cause into that tattoo. You're now raising emotional support raccoons for elderly yeah. inner city oh, but it does, citizens. I, I love this. I love the charity. It doesn't have to be charity, but I do love the idea of creating a story that then goes with your tattoo. I, it should be charity, to be clear. <laughs> and and not, not for any sort of like philanthropic thing, yep. but... You can get a pass for any tattoo. You're totally right. And for any personality flaw, if it's for charity. You're not wrong. You got to start. And I mean, you got to start like an S Corp or what are they called? Like a GOC3 or yeah. something. You know what I mean? Well, there was about two <laughs> years on Shark Tank where every bad pitch just said at the end and 5% goes to charity. Yeah, exactly. And then one of the sharks would go, I'm interested. It was also, it, it was either that or you talked about someone who passed and yes. got teary eyed and then you'd get a deal. And then so Garrett, back to you for a second. So. Your question today is not, how do I justify having this huge raccoon tattoo? No. Your question today is, how do you tell your girlfriend of 10 months that you don't like ta raccoons that much? It, 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 it really, it's... But Garf, yeah. we have to go I to know. what his question is. that I, I right, agree. Garrett, or have we switched it? Garrett, that's what we're trying to solve, right? How do we tell your girlfriend that... Right. Right. Okay, well, let's... Yeah, not just... I, I, think Josh, <laughs> I think Josh is right as far as, like, if you want to have a... For, a great tattoo story, if you can get there, is I didn't even want this fucking thing. Right. But That's this is... One. But hold but on. We, we got to go back to the premise. Yes. So let's... Here's what I would say. Wild. I would suggest that you have now peaked. You have climbed Mount Raccoon. Yeah. You're at the top. You've planted your flag in Raccoon Mountain and there is no land left to conquer. And you could tell her that after that, after the apex reach, you now feel like you don't want That's any more raccoon stuff. Since you have kind of you peaked. Top, you've peaked here. Uh, that might be an angle. Josh, do you have any instinct of how Garrett can now, after 10 months, tell a woman who gets, you like this woman, right? I do. Yeah. You don't want you don't want to break up with her. Can't. No. Definitely okay. a future there. You so you see an actual future you just said. Yeah. Okay. So Josh, if you're Garrett's buddy, mm -hmm. you now have the setup. He wants to kind of curb this raccoon stuff. Do you have any thoughts or advice of how he could do this? If there are a couple core tenets in relationships, one, honesty. Honesty is number one. Two, lying almost constantly, right? Like you should, because hear me out. That's what you've been doing. That's what Garrett's been doing. And that's why he's actually afraid of telling his yes. partner, right? It's because he's li he's been living with this for months and months and months, letting it build. And so now by admitting there is a, a tacit, um, you know, agreement that, hey, I've been lying to your face. Mm -hmm. So I kind of agree with you know your sentiment that you need to start titrating down. You need to start going, hey, I was so into raccoons and now I have physically purged this right. by getting it scarred onto my body and now I'm into platypuses. Oh, Get ready for no, some platypus no, finger no. puppet, baby. No, no, no. Josh. Switch. <laughs> His other arm can't have another weird animal. <laughs> yeah. Garrett, I gotta give you some in closing advice because this is as weird of a call as we've had in a while. You got a tattoo of a raccoon. You can't go back and say, yeah, I kind of liked raccoons, but you've gone really far with it and got me gifts forever. And they're not a big passion. You got a huge raccoon on your arm, man. It's a big passion. Or you're telling her you're a maniac. So it's either you say to this woman, I like you. I'm a total maniac. Get used to me making weird decisions for the rest of our relationship, such as you say to her, I've always wanted to be a dad. You have a kid. The kid's 10 months old and you go, I got to be honest. I've never wanted kids. I want a vasectomy. Yeah, you're, you're just giving <laughs> such mixed messages that I think you have to double down on being a raccoon man. If you were to come off just super jokey on it, it's like, oh my God, it's crazy. I don't even like raccoons like that. But like, wow, but totally in character for me. The arm. I, I'm a man with two lower back tattoos. My I didn't yeah. I my fiance watched me get one of them. It's of another man's face inside this man's kitchen after making chicken parmesan. Right. It should have gotten infected. It didn't. I went into the water at the was Jersey Shore afterwards. There was so much drinking. Okay, that makes Straight sense. Straight gin, so you, too. Here, so but you're, I'm, I'm the whimsical weirdo. So and my fiance saying, signed yeah, up yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying this is all just a bit. It's an arm bit. Now it, pull out. It's, mm -hmm. If it were on your foot, one thing. It's the, it's the real estate. 
the real estate for me is where it has taken an insane turn. Here would be my closing Hail Mary pitch. What you could do is the next time that you get the raccoon gift, you can then go, this is great. I think I love, I think saying it's your love language gift. gift that's, I love that that's what you do. I really appreciate it. I just got to say, I have enough raccoon stuff for our relationship. I have the tattoo. I love it. But I think I don't have any more room for raccoon stuff. Or you get, or you say you got attacked by a raccoon. Okay. Lying. Or we go the second, option second where you come down. Or, yeah. or we go the, or we go or, the psycho route, which is always an option. Yes. I you think, go out one night to take the trash. You take a blade, you cut your hand, and you come back in and you say, you just saw a red eyed raccoon out there. It bit you and you're done it's with a, the breed. So, Garrett, what do you think you're going to do here, bud? You could either do Mount Raccoon. You've got recently that, that idea is you've gotten. So much raccoon stuff that now you're full. You could do the slow reveal. You could double down on it, or you could pretend you were attacked by a raccoon. The trash and now tack. you hate raccoon. He has to get a rabies shot, though, to really sell it. I, I, but you could do that without I, her. Can I just say it's coming in real late in the game, but I'm falling in love with the last one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you used to be the guy doing the bad ideas. I know. Now it's become me. And I'm recently. loving it. I'm loving All it. All right. So, Garrett, where are we at here, pal? I sort of like the Mount Raccoon. Like, okay. I sort of peaked with this. And then okay. let her know, like, we can sort of cool down with this raccoon. Okay, story. so yeah. do us a favor before we go. Can you pitch three things really fast? And we got to go. Three things you like that could take over the raccoon obsession from her. Garrett, go. Three things that are as important to you as raccoons were 10 months ago. Go. All right. Uh, Don't nature think... being outside. Nature. Um, raccoons. Uh, we're from Colorado, love Colorado. Colorado, and, okay, uh, three. And, and Pokemon. Raccoons, <laughs> <laughs> all raccoon adjacent. Buddy, yeah, so all raccoon. back to raccoons. You're a raccoon right, guy. You know what, sometimes, it's, sometimes guy. it's good to take a walk around and look at other houses to know you love yours. Yeah, it's like, what Stick are things you Mount like? Raccoon. It's like, uh, nature, garbage bins, trash, <laughs> uh, being rabies. a mini bear, uh, rabies, uh, uh, claws nightlife. that really hurt. Uh, uh, nocturnal being. Being in a pack, being able to stand on two feet, <laughs> hating water. You're a raccoon guy, Claws. Garrett. <laughs> So how about this? Tell her you're getting obsessed with Colorado and maybe she can start getting you like a Colorado mug, oh. Colorado shirts, but that's going to lead back to in Colorado, there's a lot of nature. By the way, and, and you're going to start getting Colorado or, or raccoons. We're going to talk to you in 18 months and you're going to have the state of Colorado tattooed on your chest. With a raccoon in <laughs> with a, it. With a raccoon <laughs> in it. Eating trash. You're right. <laughs> Garrett, we wish you all the best, man. Thank you for the call, buddy. Good luck. Thanks, guys. <laughs> wow. Well, let's be honest. That one wasn't helpful. Wow. <laughs> we tried. We did. This episode is brought to you by ZocDoc. You guys all know what ZocDoc is. It's a free app and website where you can search and compare highly rated in-network doctors near you and instantly book appointments with them online. Yes. I'm actually going through this right now. And I go, um, you know, I had a, I'm going to try a thing called Reiki. Oh, Reiki. Reiki. Yes. Get it right. Get it right, Key. Yeah. Have you, have Interesting. You ever done, have you ever done I it? I have done Reiki. I'm very surprised by this. This Not the Zocdoc yes. part, but the Reiki part. Well, I've always been a no, and then uh, my longtime therapist recommended it, and I was talking to Eric about it, and he's a big proponent, and I thought- Does not surprise me. Yeah, the same with me. And yep. then I thought, all right, I got to find one that's good, and I honestly thought I could do a Google search and be flooded by ads- Yes. Or I can go to ZocDoc where I can put my insurance in, put my location in, and find people near me. Well, that's one of the things that is so helpful is that yeah, you can book works. you you book through it, so you don't have to like make all the phone calls and all that. And they have verified reviews from actual real patients, so you're booking appointments with tens of thousands of top-rated, patient-reviewed, credible doctors and specialists. And I also recently told you about how with my mother, like she was having some health issues and there would be certain things that pop up and you'd want to see a doctor immediately and it just cut out all the annoying figuring out to what you're talking about. It works. Um, so it go works. To, so go to ZocDoc.com slash H-T-H and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor 
today. Gilly, and, uh, jump yeah, in? I was just gonna say, Jake, let the bear out of the cage, would you? That's z o c d o c dot com slash h t h zocdoc dot com slash h t h. Gil Buchanan, Jake Johnson, one to two. This episode is brought to you by Philo. With Philo, you could stop overpaying for cable and switch to Philo. So what is Philo, Garf? I'll tell you. It's the best way to watch more than 70 of your favorite channels and save big on your monthly bills. Why don't you tell these nice people some value props? Well, Philo has shows, has movies, live TV, and for just $25 a month. You can even try it for free with their seven-day free trial. So there's no contracts, no commitments, no hassles, just a better way to watch TV. Never miss a minute of let me a show. You, let me pitch you a show they got. What? The, cha- the Challenge. Oh, Jake, don't. The Challenge. Jake, don't. Jake, don't. Now let me pitch you something that you might not be as excited about, but others might. Friends. It, oh, I'll tell you what I am excited about. Golden Girls. Yes. Without yeah. question. Without uh, question. Known as one of, one the, of best the best pilots, pilots ever yes, written. Best pilots ever made in <laughs> uh, TV. A history. show I grew up that loving, Martin. Oh, don't even. That was uh, truly. Uh, so look, if you can't get enough of TV, then there's no better way to watch. Philo, like we said, has more than 70 channels, BET, MTV, AMC. You've got a free seven-day trial. So listen, Jake, may I? Please. All right. Sign up today at philo.tv slash Gil sent me. That's P-H-I-L-O dot TV slash Gil sent me to get 50% off your first month. Gil Buchanan. Oh, really? Just got him on the periphery. Hello? Hi there. Welcome to We're Here to Help, America's number one podcast. Don't look it up. You've got some killers today. You got Jake Johnson, Gareth Reynolds, and we have the uh, the wildly popular Mythical Kitchen host, Josh Shear is here with us today. Also, author of the Mythical Cookbook. Oh my gosh! Are you amazing? Ex- yes, that's the right <laughs> reaction. Uh, now, who are you, and what have you written, and how are you on YouTube, and where are you calling from? <laughs> how are you on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> no, no YouTube presence. Okay. Um, right. Whenever you want to cut the call, yeah. Kevin, we're good. <laughs> hey, let's be honest. Neither do we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your name? <laughs> Lauren. 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 Hi, nice okay. to meet you. How old are you? Where are you calling from? I'm 34 and calling from New York City. Okay. Nice. What part of New York City? Uh, Upper East Side. Upper Cross Street. East Side, yeah. My aunt used to live on uh, 60 <laughs> years in Saga. Apartment number? <laughs> it's a nice neighborhood up there. Okay. <laughs> Lauren, floor is yours. What can we help you with today? So I would love your advice on if I should and how to confront a guy I have inadvertently been following across the country for 12 years. What? These are back-to-back wild calls. <laughs> okay. You, we're, we are, Lauren. we will not chronologically use these calls, but <laughs> wait, we might, Josh. we might. Now let me ask you a question. Does he have a raccoon tattoo? <laughs> Josh, Josh please. Please. anytime somebody uses an adverb, yeah. I realize like inadvertently, yeah. I always immediately question it. I don't know if that means that I'm not a trusting person. No, you just don't love it. That's a sticky word for me. Yeah, I don't yeah, trust yeah. anyone who knows what an adverb is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't trust anyone who knows what a verb is. <laughs> so Lauren, explain what this means. You have been following around a guy across the country. Yes. Yeah. Break this down. Yeah. I don't get it. Totally unintentional. So I first met him. We'll call him Jerry. Jerry. Um, in college, we were both chemistry majors. Cool. Big school, but overall a small group of us. Okay, so big so university, we but the chemistry together. department was small. Yes. So okay. you knew Jerry. Jerry so knows we, Lauren. <laughs> we are in a lot of classes together. Uh, we're friendly, but not friends. Okay. Um, and it's hard, like everyone knows each other, but, uh, that's the only place I really knew him from was from those classes. Okay. We graduate in 2012. He goes wherever. I have no idea. And then I move back to Minnesota where I'm from, where I start, I'm teaching for a few years. Then eventually I start medical school. Okay. So it's been now a seven year time period. Okay. Now I've moved to Texas for some additional medical training, and Jerry is there. He's in the residency program. <laughs> okay. And when you guys see each other, uh, is it excitement? Is it like, Jerry, Lauren, 
No, we we don't acknowledge each other. Mm. Wait, okay, not why idea. did you say you're, didn't you say New York City? We're getting there. Okay. This is medical school okay. in Texas. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you guys see each other and you don't acknowledge mm-hmm. each other? Strange. No. Well, we, we didn't really have, a, have a lot of. Oh, no, we have to Are you first. in love with it? <laughs> Let me tell you, he's not into raccoons. <laughs> Jake, Jake hit his head. Previous caller, previous caller. Okay, so you guys see each other. <laughs> It'll, it'll make more sense when you hear the episode. Oh, you're going to love it. I think I had a really wild thing with raccoons. It's, we're not over Sounds it. like a real Jerry. <laughs> yeah. So you guys see each other. <laughs> you don't say hi, even though you went to college together in a small group, and now you're both in Texas. Right. Yes. Okay. Now, if you called that, I, I would have advice have for you. Habit. Say hi. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, I have a habit of recognizing people, and then they don't know me. Respect. And so it's very awkward where, like, I'll know that we've met, but then they forget. And okay. so... Can I, can like, I ask a quick question? Do you, hi, this is Josh. I mostly make meatballs for a living, but now I'm here. Um, <laughs> are you positive that they don't recognize you, or is that something... Pause, that's Gareth's intro, mostly. Uh, you just don't... Uh, <laughs> uh, wait, you're filming it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, this is Gareth. I mostly make meatballs for a living, but hey, now well, I'm I, uh, <laughs> That's how he opens every one of his stand-up yeah, sets. Hey, how's everyone doing? How much are you selling those meatballs for, uh, though? Well, you know, what, I told the the people during Josh, the show. Your food's right. delicious. Gareth's disgusting. It's but actually you- a charity that I got a tattoo for. <laughs> Meatball hats? It, it's- <laughs> you put hats on meatballs? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, some people not in the Western world like you, you show this down here, they yeah. do not have access to yeah, fresh meatballs. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. exactly yeah, right. Yeah, you Italian. <laughs> Previous caller. Can, can I ask you, is, is, <laughs> is that something that you are positive about, that you mostly recognize people and they do not mostly recognize mm-hmm. you? Do you have tangible proof of that? Yes. Everybody, let's close up the all courtroom. Right. We're all leaving early. No further questions. <laughs> so, Lauren, you guys <laughs> see each other in Texas. You don't say hi. Then what? Then, so he had been there before. So he leaves that year to do a fellowship somewhere else. I don't know. Okay. I spent another four years in Texas. Okay. Now this year I've moved to New York to start a fellowship. Okay. I'm a first day orientation. Mm. I'm in line turning paperwork and Jerry is there in front of me in line. Mm. Do you guys say hi? No. Okay. So... <laughs> The, so this is when Harry met Sally. What, what is you guys are going to end up together? I think I, I, seriously, I don't. If this like you should say hi to him because yeah. you might be meant for each. Are you single? I am. Is he single? Of course he is. This I is don't a know. But now I don't know. Uh, he does he, have like a, like does he wear like a cool kind of seventies uh, wh- whiter sweater? Yeah. And does he look like Billy Crystal? And does he have like anger issues? <laughs> and he's a know-it-all, but you're opposite. <laughs> Don't go out to lunch with him. Uh, okay. Is your question, what is your yeah, question? what is your question? So, exactly. Should I say hi to him? Yes. Um, I think, like, or should I just, like, re- acknowledge that maybe he has forgotten all about me, doesn't know who I am, and leave it at that? Or if I do say hi to him, how do I say hi, yes. I guess, without seeming like a psycho, that, like, I realized we've had this long connection uh, and, and your insecurity is, is you're going to go, How, Jerry, we have this thing. And he goes, I've never seen you. I don't know life. who you are. And you're yeah. going to go, like, who are we you? literally my went name's to college. Hank. We were literally in Texas and we're here. And he's going to go, I swear to God, I don't think I've ever seen you in my life. Is that the <laughs> yeah, fear I'm of dead. this, Lauren? That's it. Exactly. Okay. Now it makes sense. So okay. it's but less. I'm, I'm with you. Like, is this a cosmic that the universe is <laughs> telling understand. us that we should be together? So this yes. boils down to. And Lauren, if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. How do you take the chance and get over your fears and say to somebody, we've literally been in three states together and I'm insecure. We've had the same life. That you've never even noticed me. Josh, go ahead. (laughs) Well, do you have to necessarily say the three states thing? Because what you could do is you start a little slow, go, hey, you look a little familiar. Did you go to a big university with small, intimate chemistry department <laughs> right. back in 2012? You could start there. Yes. I think that I think that's mm-hmm. probably the best version of it. And I think you do. I think you just say hi because it, there's mm-hmm. with these situations, a lot of times someone doesn't know. And other times people are just like, I don't want to bother. You know what but I it's think? It's never a problem. I, what is the university you went to? Can you say it? You feel comfortable? Uh, NYU. And what? Oh, whoa. wait, hold on. Are you Jerry Jake? Wait, you went to <laughs> NYU in New York. Mm-hmm. 
then you went to Texas and you're just back to NYU? No, different program in New York now. But back in New York. Back in New York. So the only weird thing is back you guys saw York. each other in Texas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean. The Minnesota part through, uh, added was, a level uh, of complication that was unnecessary. In Minnesota, yeah. Right? Well, Go ahead, Minnesota. Uh, I, my instinct on this is that Jerry is calling another advice podcast mm. asking about the same thing. What the he should do with much less handsome. <laughs> Their guest has a much less rockin' bod. You know? Yeah, and absolutely. I will say, <laughs> without, Josh, without question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this happens to me. I, I think the gym is a microcosm of life, uh -huh. which is something that people who look like me tend to say. Sure. Um, but <laughs> Me too, and that you never go to. <laughs> I think so too. Did you, say the, you said the gin? Yeah. I agree. I agree. But it I, is if you drink too much of it, you pass out. I drink out. a bunch of gin. I recognize everybody. There, there is a crew of about 15 guys that I dap up every day, and I'll call them babyface because you taught me to call them uh, babyface. You are doing it? Wow. And they call me handsome, good, and we dap each you. other up. We don't know each other's names <laughs> until you ask one to spot you about nine months in. And then you have to break the ice and go, hey, I know we see each other every day. I've, we've never exchanged names. What's the name? And it's never weird. You got to fully just break down your own barriers. When you make yourself vulnerable, you give others license to do the same. There's power in that. It's true. I think that's nice. So, Lauren, I think we're all probably going to end on the same advice. And that is you got to bite the bullet and tell that squatter whose legs your head is right in between. I don't know your name, but I do know you. And so what I would do is walk up yeah. to him next time you see him and go, hey, Jerry, how have you been since college? Did you like Texas? And if he looks at you strange, well, I have bad news for you. You're a strange lady. Then. I'm going to I'm going to eliminate the middle. I don't I, I that does take <laughs> okay on this to be a strange vibe of, lady. I've been following you. Yes. OK, I right. think you just go like this. I think it was more of the Josh vibe. You just go, hey, are you Jerry? I think we went to college together. Right. See what he says. Go from there. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that, Lauren? Just a straight Later up. Later that night, you guys are going to be smoking cigarettes after coitus. <laughs> what do you think of the, <laughs> hey, are you Jerry? Routine. When you hear that, what's your thought? I, yeah, I think that sounds good. It's, yeah, it's, it gives me an out. He's like, I don't know. He's like, oh, I must be thinking of someone else. And then I can book it and run. But if he remembers, then that yeah. works out. I, I got to say, I don't love it. What, you think just live your life? No. Lauren, I'm going to double down. I think You want the Texas. I, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think of some eccentric professor from back in the day. Let's call him Mr. Walton. Okay. And I want you to walk up to Jerry next time you see him in line and from behind go, it's kind of a Mr. Walton sweater. And okay. he turns back and goes, huh? And you go, it just is, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> and then he looks at you and he'll know what you're talking about. And he'll go. I look, you're not wrong. And now, if it's meant to be, you, you know guys what? are deep Here's... in the story. If it's not, then he looks at you like you're crazy and he goes, excuse me? And you go, you're excused. Double down into the weirdness, <laughs> do a 180 and walk away. <laughs> I like that just because we might be tempting. This might be the fates trying to put you together. So let's have That's a strong I mean. opener. Okay. So don't start. If this is when Harry met Sally, that movie doesn't start with Jerry. It starts well, no, with, it, it with a, Harry. Yes. But Lauren, you need to be, I think you have to double down on the aggressive start. You have something in common from way back in the day. Yeah. You know who this fucking guy is. And guess what? He knows who you are. Yeah. You know each other. Yeah. And for some reason, you're not acknowledging. You want to know why? He's probably a shy chemistry mm. guy. Yeah. I mean, and I can't wait to see if you two have chemistry. Yeah. Okay. Don't laugh. God, please. Damn it. He's good, though. You got to admit he's good. He cooks meatballs for a living. He sure does. Oh, oh you got to cook up? <laughs> he gives Oh, little... no. I got to make a phone call. I call the podcast. <laughs> hey, I've been giving people raw meatballs for three years at comedy shows. Hey, Lauren, what do you think about going aggressive and the next time you see him having a callback and almost saying it in his ear from behind? Just one of those. Jake, don't push it. I'd say cut the almost out of that equation there, brother. Oh, Same with say, me. Why don't you just put your pinky up his butt? No, but here. <laughs> I make meatballs. <laughs> so here's what I mean by that, Lord. I just Lauren. made a meatball. Here's what, here's what I'm looking for, and tell me if I'm out of line here. 
I'm looking for a moment. If I'm Jerry, and I know Laura, and I remember her. I saw her in Texas. She didn't say hi. I didn't say I don't want to weird her out. Fuck, now we're both in New York. We're in this small community. I don't know how to say hi. I'm a little bit of a shy guy. I do chemistry. I don't know. I'm just going to do my thing. Maybe she doesn't notice me. Why would a beautiful woman like Lauren, who's interesting and smart and a chemist, we have so much in common, why would she want something to do with middle old me? I'm little old Jerry the geek. Okay. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting there and I hear, you're looking a lot like Mr. Walton. And I turn and she's got the confidence to lean out. You know what I'm doing when I turn back? In my dreams. Because Mr. Walton had the best style. And then you have a laugh. And right away, you say, because now you're the alpha dog, Lauren, let's go eat some <laughs> raw meatballs. Yeah, well, I mean, the last part's crazy, but I, I but like it. you know it. what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, I like it. Josh, cosign. <laughs> yeah, so got? they actually have this raw ground beef sandwich in Wisconsin. They call oh, it like yeah. a tiger meat sandwich. Every year, the paper's like, don't eat those. Yeah, but here's the thing. I'm going to tell you, you should. Lauren, I know you didn't ask for advice on that, but I'm giving it to you. You just should. It's delicious. You know, uh, all food comes with risk. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but what do you think about this idea? <laughs> Only Wisconsin is that a good That the title here. of this one is obviously now all food comes with risk, Kevin. <laughs> and the idea is he is a raw meat sandwich and it takes a risk to see. But if you eat it, it might be delicious. We're not going to give you advice on this because you didn't call in for us to say, I don't know, let it go. Something in you yeah. wants to push this. You're looking for someone to kick mm -hmm. you in the ass and say, go for it. It's That's true. why you called. Am I wrong, Lauren? You're not wrong. Okay. No, that means I, he's I right. Think you're right. I think if I do it, I need to commit and, and say, and you're hey, the leader. This, this may be odd, but yeah, we've, we've known each other for all these different scenarios. So what's something, Lauren, besides, hey, we've known each other? Because then what you're doing to him is he has to do that fake thing where he goes like, do we? Oh, yeah. Lauren, he knows who you are. So what's a way to give a him an back. easy end? What is something about those NYU days that everybody in that community knows? Because if you do that, um, then he has to do that really annoying three-second thing where he's like, oh, yeah, oh, right, Lauren. Texas, too. And now you've put him in a spot where he's just losing. So what's something about the NYU days that you know he knows? The one that was going to make me sound really geeky too, but Good. we took a physical chemistry course Whoa. and there's this annoying problem called particle in a box Ooh. that you could reference. Ooh, this sure. is perfect. So Jesus how would that Christ. reference go? Oh God, I don't know. He's in line, you're in I line, you're behind him. I would pitch on this and I would have Gareth and Josh do it. Josh might be, I know Gareth doesn't understand particle in a box. Of course I do. He's just going to go like dick in a box. I was also going to do that. Thank God. And I say all guys. Thank God. By the way, I said that's literally all I have. That's all I have. Is this about the Heisenberg uncertainty principle? Whoa, what are you doing? An adverb? What? Is that another ad? You inadvertently blew my mind. No, there's a thing where the particle, you never know where it is, right? And it's like shifting. It's like the uncertainty principle. Am I lying? Is this right? That's exactly, yeah. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Let's go. Oh, wait, hold on. So explain Oof. that again, because this is the story of you and Jerry. Uh, the thing about Heisenberg, uh, don't ask where his parents went after 1940s. No, I know nothing about okay. I know nothing about this. Are you, well, will, you know. did, will you <laughs> describe to us what a particle in the box means? We got two minutes. I honestly don't remember a lot of it because okay. I haven't used chemistry since that time. Okay. <laughs> but it, exactly, it's a sense where there's the particle is, is moving rapidly in the box. It's difficult to know its position. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, yeah, it's it's difficult to know its like position and speed at the same time. Okay. okay. So you're in line. Yep. You say, "Did you just see that rat?" He, he go, you go, "Ew, rat!" He looks and goes, "Huh?" And you go like this. It's like a particle in a box. Or you go like this, or you go like this, you know, Jerry, sometimes I feel like you're a particle in a box because I never know where you're going to be, but I always know I'm going to be there. It's Ooh, me. That's fun. From college. Or you could say, Texas. hey, Jerry, that thing in between your legs is a particle in a box. <laughs> yeah. I'll try to grab it. All right. We want to thanks, Kleenex. <laughs> What do you think about something in the zone? Josh, you got something? I just like Gareth's pinky pitch from earlier. I, I the now pinky think the pinky up the butt. <laughs> that oh, that that me ball. Ball. Yeah. I don't know. So, uh, Lauren, here's what we got. I put a particle in your box, Jerry. There you go. Bingo. <laughs> so here's what we're saying, Lauren. We're saying we need you to be the aggressor. Uh, you saw our, the way our brains work when we did anything intelligent on this show about particle in a box. Gareth and I are instantly talking about sticking fingers and butts and dicks yeah. because we're idiots. Yep. Uh, you're smarter, and I think you should go smarter. 
but I think you should lead in with a reference. And if he looks at you and you'll know, and he's got squirrel eyes, then you're just a weird lady in New York who talked about something weird. And the problem is done. The problem to Jake's point, yes. you want closure on this to some extent, then you're done with it. But it's don't over. go in with an appetizer. Go in with raw meatballs. I want the whole meal here. Yeah. Yeah. You going to do it? I, I Exactly. I like it. You going to okay. do it? Yeah. Okay. Do we I'll have do your word you're going to do it? You do. You do. Okay. We so want the, the follow-up. I think. Yeah. And yeah, I'll I'll follow up once once we connect. And if you get married, Jake and I will come. Josh will too. Mm -hmm. I'll make the meatballs. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. But so, Lauren, on your word, the next time you see him, no matter how bad your stomach ache is, and no matter how much you say in that moment, it's just a stupid podcast. I'm not even doing it. <laughs> They're you're idiots. giving your they don't word even know what an adverb that is. you're doing it. Yeah, and I'm you're doing not going to just go. Hi, do you remember me? Jerry! You're going to lead out with something Texas. aggressive and weird, Lauren. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> and you're going to feel uncomfortable, yeah. and it might come off wrong. Guts get glory. But you are either going to win big or you're going to lose big. But the beauty of New York, 15% of New York are just weirdos walking by you saying, like, particle in the box. And you go, like, shut up. She says, <laughs> this, sir, this is poop. Get away from me. I'm trying to play chess in the park. I got particle a particle in, in a box. I'm going to put my finger in your butt. I'll, sell you, I'll sell you a particle in a box for $6. So, Lauren, are you going hard on this? I'll, I'm going hard. I, I love guess. it. Please I'm, follow I'm up. This is going to be a great, this is going to be the first true romantic comedy yep. of our podcast. Yep. Yeah, we'll find out <laughs> if you guys really do have chemistry. You've already done that, Joe. I did? Well, we got That's a second option. Kevin, out. we got a second option. If That's we not the hour. Title. You know what I do know for sure? uh -huh. The three of us have chemistry. There's our we'll hour. Be right back. <laughs> Thanks, Lauren. Thank you. Jake, let me tell you about when I first started AG1. Um, I first of all, as you know, I go on the road all the time, and when I'm home, I really do try to eat healthy. I try to consistently like get the nutrition you need. It's very difficult when you're working in environments that basically run on mozzarella sticks and fries. So I started bringing AG1 on the road with me. Once I started doing that, I started drinking one of those every morning. Uh, I just felt better, felt more in line with the nutrition I wanted. I had better energy. I could focus, all those things. What's nice about it is you can guarantee you get all your nutrients with one drink that, yes. as a guy who likes taste, it tastes good. It's not it a disgusting formula, because if it no. was, I wouldn't do it. Yeah, it's really actually brought the color green uh, back as far yeah. as drinks go. Uh, so AG1 has uh, been around since 2010. They led the future of foundational nutrition, continuously refining their formula to create a smarter, better way to elevate your basic health line. Jake, you know me, I'm a big probiotic guy. I'm, I a, pre love... I'm a prebiotic guy, yin and We've yang, argued you a lot. Me. It's the yin taste great, yang, less filling. Yeah, this is the Cubs, <laughs> this is the Bears-Packers battle. Yeah. And I'm not backing down, I'm pro. Pre's better, I su Pre's better. I, su I support your pre, hey, but I'm we, pro. We can both agree Look, that we're magnesium guys. We're magheads. We've always yes. said that about ourselves. We call each other magheads. But I will um, say that I do recommend it to anybody in my life because it's easy. You can get it in powder. You can, you know, it's, a, it's an easy way to get everything that you need in terms yes. of your nutrients. And as we age, Garf, man, it is important. So if there's one product I recommend to elevate your health, it's AG1. That's and that's right. why I'm excited and why I'm excited to welcome them as a partner for our show. We so love them. We love them, Jake. <laughs> I drink, uh, I, I'll dr I drink about five a day. Uh, sometimes it's all I drink and, uh, you know, and I feel I've never felt better. I've lost about 130 pounds since you last saw me, which has been a while because you guys have really <laughs> boxed old Gil out. No need to say anything. If you want to take ownership of your health, it starts with AG1. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D3, K2, and five free AG1 travel packets. That's what Gareth was talking about. I'm not him. With your first purchase at drinkag1.com slash here to help. That's drinkag1.com slash here to help. Hey, do me a favor. Check it out. Before we get rid of you, Josh, first of all, thank you for doing it. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for having me, man. And it's incredible. Can you? It's ridiculous. We, we, we're out here changing lives. <laughs> yeah. The three of us, just like it's always been. Yeah, no. I, in <laughs> we sure are. The raccoon guy's life, we really did. Change. I will say both of those were pretty wild calls. Yes. Yes. Mm. Was that for intentional, small, Kev, man? I swapped 
uh, the second one to be more tame. You did okay. Well, uh, okay. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. It felt like a theme because with each guest, they'll be like slightly different theme. Because Kevin mm-hmm. picks them, mm-hmm. the theme you got were these are a little bit wild. Raccoon small, kind of, small wild. Though. Yeah, small wild. I'm gonna spoil something, but the second call initially was someone wanting to gift a crow to her husband. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Buddy, this one fits more. So I hope we do that one. So Josh, when That's... I did your show, which I really mm. enjoyed, you told me a little bit about your backstory and how you got into uh, cooking and how you got into having a massive YouTube show. Could you tell Gareth and our group your kind of journey into what you're doing? Because it's a wild, it's a wild show, and it's a huge win for you that has ended up now with a cookbook that, as you've said, is doing good. Yeah, number one New York Times. Crazy. Crazy. Is that true? It, it is true. We beat Dion Sanders, which was huge. Wow. Whoa! And I would time. like to challenge Dion to a forty yard dash backwards. I think you well, will I, win. I think I he think just I had got issues it. with his. Foot, Josh. That's a perfect time. Strike That's while the iron is I can Dion. challenge Dion. <laughs> By the way, either one of these I want to yeah. see. If you get yours, please invite but, Jake. But Josh, will you walk us through a little bit about your journey? Because I find it fascinating. Sure, sure, sure. Thanks, so, uh, you know, I grew up watching Food Network constantly. I was a total latchkey kid, uh, single dad, just lived with a brother. And uh, by the time I was 11 years old, I really took an interest in Food Network. And my dad was like, if you cook family dinners every single night, that'll be your only chore. He's like, here's a grocery budget. No Walk way. across the street to to the Ralphs. You're buying groceries. You're keeping a budget. And you're how cooking old dinner. are you at this time? I was like 11 years old. My oh, brother. My and this Lord. is out here? This is out here, Orange County. Yeah, uh-huh. like uh, Mission Viejo area for anybody that knows it. And, you know, my dad, like, worked late at night. And, and to his credit, he would clean the toilets. He would yeah, do yeah, all yeah. my chores. Wow. And I was out there just rolling out gnocchi That's as a so little 11-year-old great. just being like... This is what it. This is what it is. And so you just then said, like, I think I can do this. So the first meals weren't great. No, the first meals were terrible. But then yeah, you yeah. started forming a passion. I did, and then I I got to college. I actually went to school on a track and field scholarship. Yeah, I remember. Uh, that. Shot put and discus, which explains I mentioned I was eighty pounds heavier. Yeah. Um. Just you know, you're also eating seven thousand calories a day, and so you sort of get triple the cooking practice. Right. You're just up in yeah, those numbers. Yeah. It's about reps. But then uh, when I was nineteen, my dad actually passed away. And which is part of how I started the show, Last Meals, right. because I'm obsessed with right. the concept of death. And yeah, I'm the person that even in, if somebody's asking for basic relationship advice, I'm like, well, let's get down to the actual issue. You're not worried about the raccoons. You're worried about the fact that you're afraid that you can never be honest with a partner. And then one day you're going to die unfulfilled. I always like take it yeah, to yeah, that yeah, level yeah, yeah. and try and get down to the meat of it. Uh, but I also love meatballs. And so I was like, <laughs> how do I combine those two things? It's amazing. Uh, yeah, because I, I watched my dad sort of pass away without like a real hobby or passion. You how know? interesting. And that was something that affected me so hard because we we didn't grow up with any money. And so I was always like, let's get a government job. I was going to yeah, work yeah, for yeah, the yeah. CIA, whatever that means. Um, and instead, I started a food blog called culinarybrodown.com. And then that sort of blew up. And I just kept parlaying But So what that. happened with that? So that when you say that blew up, it just you started getting views people were starting to pay attention you started feeling like oh shit's different yeah it was, was that uh, a blog or was that a that was video no straight up blog i, I yeah. was a writer and i thought i was going to be a writer my whole life i yeah. had never been on camera i had no interest wow but i actually got i got a literary agent while i was a junior in college wow. 21 years old my blog got shortlisted for an award from sever magazine yeah. And this literary agent hit me up and said i know you're still in school but when you graduate keep in contact because you you really have the goods here and then uh, I dropped out of school immediately because it was hard. Yeah. Um, after my track and field eligibility ran up. Uh, and then I worked on a book proposal. I was writing for magazines. I had like a, a column for a couple of years with Maxim Magazine. Oh, wow. Uh, where I just wrote about food and uh, eventually wrote a book called The Culinary Bro Down Cookbook. Uh, very Tucker Max meets Anthony Bourdain, mm-hmm. but hopefully not as yeah. much of a piece of crap as, you know. Uh, the first one. Um, yeah, he's probably fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, I eventually sent a copy of that cookbook to Rhett and Link over at Mythical Entertainment. And you just did that wow. cold? Pretty much. I mean, it's kind of, you know, PR gifting type of thing. Yeah. But I, I had worked with them once on a video. A year had passed. And I was like, well, let's send them a copy of the cookbook. And I thought they may And how And how big it. were they at the time? Oh, massive. They were already massive. Well, okay. they were massive on YouTube, but I knew nothing about YouTube. Yeah. I didn't grow up watching Same it. Same with me. I'm still new to it. I'm still trying to like 
wrap my head around it. You guys are doing great as YouTubers, though. Well, no, but wow. what it is is for me, it was your show was a bit like there's a few shows I've done that have kind of started. The press tour I did for Self Reliance, I wanted to do it different because mm. I have kids and they only watch YouTube. Oh, so, so oh, yeah. I was kind of like, but I had been always more old world. Yeah, yeah. And so doing your show when I got there, I was even surprised like how big the production value is. We had an incredible moment on that where uh so we had Kelly Rowland yes. uh on Last Meals and she uh had just like walked off of the Today show set yes. and it became a weird moment. Oh, um but uh that was like a week after she was on Last Meals and uh they showed a picture of the Today show dressing room and it was just like unkempt and I'm like we're in Burbank, California. We're a YouTube show and we got a whole like talent <laughs> wrangler. We got a nice clean green room, all the cold brew. Well, it's everything about what you guys are doing is as big or bigger than your biggest shows. Mm. And on those shows, you're kind of jumping in, you're doing six minutes, it's not quite working. And then on these YouTube shows, it's more long form. Mm. And also in terms of the host, we, I mean, which we'll get to the follow-up, you're really doing homework. So when I was there, you're not just fucking around making food and we're goofing around. Mm. You had thought about what we were doing and it's taken interviews in places that I personally wasn't expecting <laughs> where I was like, oh, I thought last meals and I'd watch like the Hanks one. I mm -hmm. kept up. I was like, okay, fun. But I'm like, oh, we're getting heavy. And then when you and I told Kevin this right away. So on our show, we did the uh, we one of our first callers that we released was the ostrich farm. Mm hmm. Arguably when we were like, this show can get wild. Yes, and that was one of the first ones where we thought like, these are the calls we need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A guy gives his boss a, uh, a gift. He gives him uh, tickets to an ostrich farm. Small problems, big to you. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> it was so huge to him. So huge. It, it was truly, that, that episode is so crazy because also we dug a little and we're like, you have asked him to go six hours <laughs> <laughs> for ostriches but, and he doesn't love them but then on your show that guy works at the same company as you you surprised me with him coming as the follow-up mm -hmm. that's great producing the, great the way that came about yes. so my uh co-executive producer annalise she like shuts the door we share an office and she's looking around she goes i was listening to we're here to help one of our co-workers was on an episode i was like eh, who and which one <laughs> tell me i'm literally trying to produce this show and I want to research. She goes, I, I don't know if you'd want me to tell you because like, I'm not going to lie, it's like a little bit awkward. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to find it's gonna this. It's going to happen. Either yeah, tell yeah. me. <laughs> and so I listened to it and then I was like, I'm going to go talk to Chris. I mean, he would probably love to talk to Jake about this. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, we got to slow play it. And I'm like, I'm going to just say it instead. Yeah, 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 and yeah. so he was super stoked to uh, so yeah. come on. Yes. Uh, oh, oh my God. It. Jake called me after that. He's like, you're it. not going to believe what just happened on Last Meals. Well, that also really got me obsessed with this idea of follow-ups. Yeah. I liked them from the beginning. And we were always like, we want that. Seeing that, I'm like, oh, that's a whole new wrinkle yeah. of fun. Yeah. And then you have, you said he texted you. Mm -hmm. You have a follow-up to the follow-up. Yeah, while I while I go pull that up from my phone that's on airplane mode. Yes. Uh, do you remember what was going on what was going on behind us uh while Chris was telling that story? No. We had Nicole, senior culinary producer, cooking. in a sushi. Yeah, yeah, coat, cooking sushi behind us. Doing right. a whole, yeah, 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 omakase. And doing each dish. As <laughs> right. we had some bit about, we were like, oh, well, where in Japan are you from? And she goes to the South. You're like, oh, not like those yeah. soft northern chefs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there's just yeah, so much I remember going she made on. like a bone, a seared bone yeah. marrow thing. Yeah, she rocked it. Yeah, she rocked it. Uh, all right. So, uh, this Chris, is the follow up. To by the, the way, follow up to the this follow -up. is so long, it could hit the New York Times bestseller list. <laughs> I, we're gunning for it. We're, we're gunning it. for it. But so Chris got Link, the boss, the ostrich farm tickets, yes. and then he came up and told you yes. that, oh, Link finally addressed them and said, thank you, this is a funny, thoughtful gift. Yes. And then uh, now Chris has left the company. Unrelated reasons, uh, Chris got engaged and his lovely fiance and him are moving back to Boston, but okay. he sent me um, a message. Uh, uh, hold on, there's a whole, should I read the whole thing? Sure. Well, it's about how I didn't sign a cookbook for him. Uh, I just wanted to say <laughs> well, how much I appreciate- so nice in person. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to go to his farewell party. <laughs> Damn it. This is turning. But you know, know, this is how you I know that Josh is better. sincerely a nice guy yeah, because yeah. he's casually reading these yeah. things like, oh, whoops. Uh, I just wanted to say how much I appreciate working with you and also for your willingness to have me on Last Meals. Uh, it was an unexpected joy that I never expected when I joined uh, Mythical. And so nice. for him to have that experience okay, was good. absolutely huge. That was really nice. That's great. Yeah. And that, then, can you, before we go, can you tell us, a, unless you got something? Well, I was just going to, what was the genesis of the show style? Because it is such an inter interesting way to interview. It yeah. really is like, 
it's a very organic way to learn about someone, learn mm. about someone's yeah, totally. connection to food. I think food, like you're saying, the Food Network was kind of the seed that sprouted in this mm. weird way now with, I think, especially art, this country's relationship with food. But how did you land on that idea? And how did you feel about being on camera interviewing people in that way? It's funny. I, I had never really been on camera interviewing people. I had been on camera cooking a lot and I interviewed people when I was like a magazine journalist, mm -hmm. but I never actually fused them. Um, but my thought was, if you can get somebody to just be sitting there drinking a beer, totally. eating their favorite foods, those to me are when all the deepest conversations happen. Mm -hmm. And when you can be comfortable enough to look Tom Hanks in the face as he's like, you know, eating uh, Greek salad and tara masalata and being like, hey, so I heard your dad testified at the murder trial of your grandfather. That's pretty yeah. crazy. And they're just like, oh, yeah. You know, it, it's a great disarming way. Yeah. And I think a lot of people... Yeah, we're not doing gotcha stuff out there. I yeah, think a lot of people sure. want to talk about this stuff. It's very you know? bored, like the Bourdain connection yeah. is there. Yeah, that yeah. was what his show did mm. so transform. And then who are three dream guests for you? Because oh, now man. hearing this, like, because what you're doing is you are, it does get people talking. You do have booze involved. Yeah. It's also your favorite food. So for me, I'm like, it does. And the element, even though it's it's a high production, mm. you aren't just two people sitting there and the people are dark enough behind the cameras. It's like this, mm -hmm. that you're really focusing who would time. be your dream and top three? Don't feel like you have to say. I knew you were going to make it about. Go him. ahead. <laughs> what? Well, there's this guy that makes raw meatballs in L.A. I don't know if you've Garrett heard about him. Cannot help. It's, it's been a relationship <laughs> complaint. <laughs> uh, guy Fieri would be one. Yeah. Great. Uh, Tra uh, Travis Kelsey. Mm -hmm. We had Jason Kelsey on, and he's the personal hero as a Birds fan. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, now yeah. I want I want to get the other Kelsey brother on there. I want to see what's deeper behind. Fun. You know, Guy he's Fieri been... would be really fun on that. And then uh, Ryan Reynolds. Uh, oh, interested. Yeah. Big fan of, and he actually <laughs> he reached out to me after the Tom Hanks episode. Uh, well, I reached out to him. Hear me out. But he responded, which I did not expect at all. And I sent him a message. It was really weird. I was yeah, overcompensating. Yeah. I was like, I'm a 13 year old boy. It, was, yeah. it just it got. But anyways, he responded and he was like, I'd love to do the show when I'm like back from England. And so, uh, Ryan, if you're out there, because he does, he's a listener. Yeah, he's yeah, a he big listener. He's a, a helper. Have you guys decided he's on a name for the fans? Uh, helpers is what we've landed on. We I heard, have we? I, well, I heard I heard someone else pitch something. I can't remember. I you said like, trash bandits earlier in the episode. I kind of <laughs> like that. I, Kevin, I, there's a we had a lot of people on the YouTube doing comments on one. I gotta say. I like anything connected to Gareth. There's a character called Gil Buchanan that does our ads. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> I like anything linked to that part. The gilly beans. I yeah, like, like the ones beans. and twos. Yeah. Uh, 68 yeah. and balmies. Because <laughs> Gareth creates all these catchphrases where you'll go like, well, ones and twos, 68 and balmies. So anything in there is my two cents, but we haven't found it yet. Yeah. Well, tra uh, Travis and Jason Kelsey, they have the 92 percenters, yeah. which oh, okay. sounds too much like a militia with very upset. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Most militias don't have great moderate politics, yeah, yeah, but yeah. this one sounds <laughs> it like. It actually does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then before we get ready, can you tell us a little bit about the book? Sure, Mythical yeah. Cookbook. So the Mythical Cookbook, <laughs> number one New York Times bestseller. Um, okay? it, uh, it's everything that Mythical has done with food. We literally took the best recipes we have ever created. Cool. I mean, over the course of like a decade, you know, the show spans. Good Mythical Mornings had damn near 3,000 episodes at this wow. point. Wow. And so we just converted all of it. I mean, crazy stuff. Animal style mac and cheese. Fun. Orange chicken parmesan, grilled cheese ramen, all these crazy things we've come up with, along with just a lot of very weird stream of consciousness writing because that's right. the only thing I know how to do. So there's a whole animated children's story in there. I have a whole like butcher chart guide to how we can uh, stop making bacon from pigs and make it with penguins because we're already like destroying the habitat Wait, as well. Hold on. Yeah. Penguin bacon? Penguin bacon. It can happen. You know, penguins make milk? No. Didn't yeah, until now, milk. but that's. Wait, so I'd you're. Love a little bit of this milk. real pitch is. Because I thought you were going to go get rid of the bacon. We're going to uh, plant based tofu. No. And That's I was going to. one go, way to go. And you're talking about what this is not about. You're talking about killing a bunch of penguins and making bacon out of those mm -hmm. gross little birds. If you've seen March of the Penguins, yeah, that's they're them. already dying. You <laughs> that's know? like lobsters in the tank at <laughs> Red Lobster. <laughs> but if you've seen Big Pig, pig in the City, that pig is thriving. Yeah, He's yeah, in the yeah. city. <laughs> you know? You know, it's but a wild pitch, but a bacon? great one. Jake, by the way, you'd eat Yuck. penguin bacon. Um, but hold on. <laughs> Don't get out of this. This is wild, Josh. Mm -hmm. You want to do penguin bacon? Well, we have a whole pit. We have, I mean, kangaroos, because they're an invasive species. You know, the Australian government used to literally just pay people to show up. Kangaroos are an invasive species. Oh, yeah. No, Australia, straight up. You could just kill a kangaroo <laughs> and show up to what? like a government agency, and they'd give you cash for it. Australia There's... is barely Where are kangaroos place? supposed <laughs> to be from, then? 
Well, no, they just they they eat too many uh, of the crops, and they. But they like, what, you know, how like, rat, like, deer. like rats basically went on ships. What did a kangaroo yeah. sneak well, on? No, no, no. Oh, sorry, sorry. We are the invasive species. I was okay, going to say, okay. would, would you eat The kangaroos evolved. Would you eat human yeah. then? What? Would you eat human? Uh, we have you know, to go. We. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you guys for watching us on YouTube. Please like and subscribe so you don't miss any of this quality content. Ring, ring. Here to help. Go ahead. Oh, my God. Damn. I'm kind of Cut. That was a HeadGum Podcast.